Cool, okay, so welcome back in everyone. Probably been about 10 days since we last touched our Gloomhaven campaign. I've had a fairly busy Christmas. I hope everyone watching's had um, an enjoyable Christmas as well, or holiday season if that's what you celebrate. Um, and then let's jump back in, if I can find the right button. So I think where we left it last time, we had a couple of level ups to go through. So we are going to do that first. And then I think we had a brute quest in its storyline that we were going to tackle next. Yeah. So we've got a scoundrel and a tinkerer level up. So I'm going to note we're at level three on the party so far. I'm not sure if this is going to bump us up to level four. So let's find out. Wrong button. So we can have crippling poison, add plus two to all your attacks targeting enemies with poison forever. Attack to poison immobilize. This is nice as an action on the bottom card. We don't have too many attacks on the bottom. We can attack for range three and wound and a loot. I think for what we're going for, crippling poison is the fairly obvious choice. I, I can imagine a play here where we run in, poison, immobilize, and then flee on the next turn with a quick card for example having the ability to burn crippling poison at some point towards the end of the mission seems fairly good so we're going to take that we are still level three by the looks of it check what the perks are i think we're going to replace another naught with a two again we're just upping the average roll that our desk has deck has even. Okay, Tinkerer. Reach level 6-2. We can have Gas Canister. Traps create 1 damage for 4 damage muddle trap and adjacent hex. At the end of your next 4 turns, one ally within range 3 may recover one of their discarded cards. There's some value in that. At the end of your next 5 turns, perform an attack 2 range 5 action or heal 3 range 4. I'm kind of against the traps, we've just not had much ability to trigger those. Just scrolling through the other cards that we have. Another bottom heal card isn't going to be the worst thing in the world for us. Noxious Vials, I can also see having some value for us. So we've got the... Um, poison build on our um, scoundrel where she can get extra damage for poisoned enemies with the burn card we picked up last turn. I think we'll go with this. I can see a case of noxious files as well. What I'm thinking with auto turret is if we're able to put poison down on things with the scoundrel we're basically getting extra damage with the Tinkerer, and the Tinkerer often has cards to burn. He's just got the largest deck of everyone, so we're gonna go with Auto Turret. Now, perks for the Tinkerer. We can add some plus one heals, just immobilize, springing up fire. So do we, I think the choice here is between wound and immobilize. I really like the idea of the Immobilize if we combine that with the uh, machine gun card we just took. Like we're just we're going to get much more ability to control the rooms. We'll do hobble. Obviously, we need a bit of luck to make hobble work, but we may get some luck every so often. Okay, so the only thing I want to do this turn is some blessings again. I do want to look at some enchantments, but I'm, I don't want to do that this evening. I might do that. I'll do a bit of research for that offline. So we're going to bless the scoundrel. We've got devotion four. Oh, rocket boots. During your movement, add plus three and jump. They are nice. What does our brute have at the moment, equipment wise? So he has boots of dashing, which are plus three. So the reason they're interesting on the brute is we have the move X damage X card. 
I need, need a bit more research on that. So we're going to bless the hatchet as well. Donate. Get back to the world map. Okay, we're going to go for the Vermling village. Ow, okay, so we have to do a survive 10 or more rounds. So when I did one of these last time, um, we had to drop the difficulty down to normal because the ability to survive 10 or more rounds with constantly spawning elites was too much for us. So I might change my mind and we're going to go just do a normal story quest this evening. We have to go for Boots of Speed to move our initiative. Gain a curse, I don't like the idea of that. Hook, pulling's not great. Tower Shield isn't bad. Lose if one brute dies. Do we unlock any locations anywhere? I'm not Amber Hill. So what do we need? Starting with Shallowfield Manor. Starting village South Shield. Low Town. Okay, Shadowfield Manor. So this lets us unlock another story quest. So we're gonna go with this one. So the cultists have the, the weird summoning attack, right? So we need to make sure we're able to kill those quickly. Okay, let's go. You have only heard of the Shadowfield family in stories to frighten children. The reclusive dynasty who live deep in the forest and are said to perform strange rites. However, you have received a request of aid which reports that members of the Umbran League have been spotted on the grounds and they are attempting to break into the family catacombs to defile their ancient tombs. You travel to the manor pass through the iron gates and head to the graveyard at the rear. Cultists are congregating outside a particular crypt. As they see you, they summon bone rangers and command them to attack. Yeah, so the cultists are the summon guys. So we've got to be careful with that. Kill a monster with an attack that has disadvantage. Be targeted by a attacks from three or more monsters in the same round. Pincushion sounds okay. Use equipped items two times your level, be the first to kill a monster. It's not unreasonable for the scoundrel to be the first person to kill something. I think we're probably safer with the scoundrel on items. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got you teaching my items twice in order to pull that off. Let's go with this one. The, the, we'll go with the be the first to kill a monster. Okay, Tinkerer. Never allow your current hit point value to drop below half. End your turn. End each of your turns adjacent to a wall or obstacle. Ugh. Neither of those seem helpful or easy. We'll go with Die Hard. Okay, 13 or more experience. Suffer damage from an attack the same time that you long rest. We don't want to be long rest in a place where we can take damage, so we're going to go with work costs. Okay. Into dungeon. Let's give it a try. Dark power has always been said to walk around this area of the forest. It entirely blots out the power of light too. Use that to your advantage. Ah, so we have lots of dark element. Okay, I was wondering what that meant. Okay, so the good news is it's a two room problem, as far as I can tell. Bad news is we start off with three cultist elites and three bone ranger elites. So the cultist leads have got 15 health. So I think we're definitely going to need some amount of stun first up. So this seems an obvious target to stun so that we can then come back to it later. I 
I sillyly didn't put in my new cards, did I? Now, so being able to move and disarm would be quite helpful. So the Tinkerer goes here. Let's move to disarm. So something like that is quite nice for the Tinkerer. That takes these two out of the fight. Brute. What's your fastest initiative move card? Is there a trap? There is. So what if the Brute does something like move here, then with an initiative 28. So he could move the full seven, come in here to attack the cultist, push this guy back through two traps which will essentially finish him off. That seems fairly okay, right? So then we've got the hatchet. So he obviously wants to use the favorite first time up. That's what we always do. Then what do we do on the second one? So there is there another trap anywhere? No. So ideally I'll get an attack on the bottom card. I don't have too many attacks on the bottom card. I don't, I, I don't want to burn too many. I'm not sure we're going to be getting too much movement out of these guys, so I think Overwatch is bad. So ideally what's going to happen is the Brute's going to finish here, adjacent to this guy. So I have a move to poison adjacent enemies somewhere. Research of the Inevitable. And then I need something that's sort of got an attack. where I can maybe that means she goes very very late is that a problem so this guy's going to be disarmed this guy's ideally going to be stunned Brute is going to push this guy. Does he have a stun hammer? He doesn't. So at the moment I'm going to end up with two cultists alive potentially this turn. Is there any way I can go... 28 is the fastest the Brute can go. So seven. Then I think next turn we use these two to try and take up this cultist. Okay, I think that's what we're gonna have to do this turn. Let's see where that gets us. Okay, so the cultists aren't summoning anything. That's good, they're just moving and healing. The bone rangers are targeting two. So that's a bit of a problem. I don't think we should change any of our plans though.
Let's not use the favorite this turn. I don't think we need to. Minus one, okay. Good stuff. So we're going to attack here to stun. Is that the right move? Honestly, it probably doesn't matter. Because I'm already going to disarm up here. Disarm. Brute. Now we want the movement card. I want to put the boots on so I can get the full seven damage out. And that gets us full seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we'll do the push. Fine. We have to push him the full three. Good. Now, so the interesting question is. What cult, do we attack the cultist or do we try and attack the archer who's going to deal us more damage? So the bone range is not doing too much damage, so I think we're going to attempt to attack the cultist to make sure we finish it off. That was a nice hit. I'll take one of them. Use the chainmail because no reason not to. We'll take the damage, that's okay. Ah, oh, the cultists are all healing themselves. That's irritating. I hadn't thought of that. Okay. So we're gonna move two over here. We're gonna poison the adjacent enemies. See how much damage we can get off. That was good. Okay, the bless kicked in there. End turn on the scoundrel. So what can the hatchet do? What's his biggest attack? So his biggest attack is attack six with a range of three. Doesn't have a bonus for having the favorite on. Repeat shot does. So I think we take repeat shot. No point in using double throw. Is there any way to push? Not really a trap anywhere. So I think that's the right thing to do. Focus the hatchet over here. I just wish I had a little bit, a little bit more something on a bottom card that I could use usefully. Might just be a case of just picking something and moving a bit higher up. So we'll just move the hatchet up here. So we're gonna hit you with wound. And I think we do Thief Snack, so that's 
5 damage, 9 damage, which means you've still got 6 to go. So, unstoppable charge is just an outright 5 damage. That doesn't seem too bad. So I think getting Dangerous Contraption out so that they begin to target that is helpful. Immobilizers of limited use because they're archers. But I want to get the Dangerous Contraption out early. I don't want to burn two cards in one turn, that seems too aggressive. But a Disorient of Lash is too late. We're not going to use Net Shooter this turn. So let's do that. Okay, those initiatives look good. So the cultists aren't summoning anything, but if we manage to kill one this turn, it's going to be bad news. The Bone Ranger elites are going to cause a problem. So we might retarget and try and kill more of the Bone Rangers. There's no way the scoundrel can get round to attack the Bone Ranger. Hit the curse. End the scoundrel's turn. We're going to immobilize the cultist because now he's closer to us. It makes more sense. And we're going to move over this way. Then I think if we put the battle bot up here, he should draw quite a lot of fire from those archers. That we can't do too much about at the moment. Do I use the stun hammer here? I think we do. Otherwise, I think we're going to take too much damage. I think we'll spare dagger down here. I really want to trigger the poison again. That's why I'm doing that. Because that should mean this guy's possible to finish off next turn. I think we're going to do this. We're going to put the favourite on. This would have been a good round for a crit because we could have got him most of the way dead and his explosion wouldn't have hurt us. Then we're just going to move. Do we need to move? Because my favourite's here, I'm going to need to move back here. I think we're just going to end the Hatch's turn. The battle bot lasted not very long. So provoking roar, we're going to do that here. <clears throat> and I think we'll get warding strength do we want Warden Strength up? 
Move to shield one isn't bad. You ideally need a heal, Tinkerer. So you're going to have to use... Do I need you to use that? Attack 2, range 4, that's going to be 4 damage. He doesn't have any poison on him. So I think I need to use the burn card. because otherwise I'm going to have too much to deal with, and then I've got to go faster, so we'll use Second Wind. So you are disarming, and then moving and shielding. That's all you can really do. So I want you to better heal yourself. Then I've got to work out what to do about that guy. I want to save Disorienting Flash if I can do, because I don't think I need it this turn. So I do have Stamina Booster as a top heal. You could then just move up here, Tinkerer. That would at least take you away from being the closest. So you have a move three, attack three. That gets you over here. But I don't have any movements on the bottom. So you need to flanking strike first. Then do you just move five and just get close to him? I think so. See how that works out. So they're attacking three, targeting two. No summons again. Okay. It's the only the only saving grace so far has been they haven't been using these summons. So let's kill him off. So he is Cursing. Let's go here. Skip the rest of the movement. The reason I want to do this is that way I can isolate him if I choose to next turn. Do I want to use the invisibility cloak? I don't think so. I think we'll save that for when we go through the door. Make sure we've applied the disarm. And we're gonna move to here. And shield one. So this way no one's no one should be attacking the tinkerer. hope we get a good roll. Nope, no good roll. We hit that one naught left in our deck. We may as well go pick up. May as well get a bit closer. Do I want to get closer? No, I don't. Otherwise I'm going to be at a disadvantage. Receive the damage. So 
You're not poisoned. That's good. So I'm going to move here. Might as well get some gold. Then we can at least heal. End turn. Atchet. So I could move with the hatchet there. And then I'd be able to push. Or I could just move and then pick up the axe. That's probably better. Attack four. Yep, yeah, so that's going to make sure we kill it. Toxic Bolt seems an obvious choice there. And then a Restorative Mist. What I'm trying to work out, is there any way I can order this so that we get the Leaping Cleave off after the poison? So my pull is on the same card as the only attack that I have left here. your stun potion left you do though but I might want to save that for the next room how do I avoid these guys completely crushing warding strength is an obvious choice What if I did just warding, warding strength and leaping cleave? That will hit three damage. That's about the most damage I can expect it to do. want to try and go after the tinkerer. Is that the right thing to do? So what do I do the turn after after this? So I think he dies. Ideally he dies. And I don't have any cards left to really take this guy out. That's probably okay. I'm saving myself one extra turn. So summon living bones. That's what we want to make sure we avoid. Ouch. Okay, attack two, range five, target two. Attack two, range five, target two. That is nasty. So should I try this and just see if I can... doesn't matter, there's no point in using the item because she will have to come over anyway.
you may as well just stay there. Let's get. Attack two. And let's move over and grab the favorite. And that's just turn. So I think we want to use this one. Yep. Then we're going to this on that brute. In theory, there's nine damage there. So maybe I misplayed this. Okay, never mind. But if I'd killed this one with the Tinkerer by using the goggles to get a better roll, I may have been able to one-shot that guy. Yeah, it's okay. Burn movement. No attack here. That is gonna hurt. Okay. Burning cards at this rate. Okay, I don't know how we survived that. Let's get some heals going. Okay, heal five, range two. Do we have anything else with a heal up here? That's a bottom heal. Hook gun, make sure we get rid of this guy. So you. Who, who has damage left? Attack three. Move two. Move one. So I might have to do that. So that's... Two damage plus two damage with the shield, that is, plus three damage is six damage total. So, Brute, can you just try normal attack and we'll see if we can get it done? And then that lets you long rest. Let's give it a try. All allies and enemies adjacent to the target suffer a damage. Pleasant. So let's do this one first. That should kill it because of the poison. You've got to be kidding me. More curses. So should we change our strategy? No, I can actually still kill it because of where I pulled it to, so that's okay. No, I can't. So I have to move two, then move one.
But we should be able to pick up the hatchet, the favourite afterwards, that's okay. So let's do... Then we'll move two. Confirm movement. Confirm action. Okay, we are going to be able to move one now. And then kill that one guy as well. That wasn't bad, and we're going to skip the movement here so we can pick up the favourite. Okay, Brute's turn. Now, do we want to go and pop the door? Or should we go next to the door? So if I pop the door, I know what the cultists... No, I don't know what the cultists were doing because they didn't have a cultist alive. I don't want to pop the door, have some cultists in there, and then find that all of a sudden what they do is summon a bunch of skeleton warriors that I then spend hours cleaning up. So let's not do that. Let's get as close to the door as we can. Then we're going to do some short resting for Brute. And we'll skip the attack. Scoundrel, you heal. What do I want to lose? We'll lose that one. And we'll end the scoundrel's turn. So the problem with that approach, where the scoundrel short rested out of sync, was now everyone else probably has to short rest. That's probably okay. It's almost the perfect card to lose for the Brute. Short rest you. Okay, then short rest as well. That's my... I'm gonna... I don't want to lose my bottom attack, so I'm going to keep that one. That's okay. okay. So how do we want to play going through the door? So I think I want to use your biggest movement card. And smoke bomb. I'm going to try the unstoppable charge. I keep trying this and it never works, but we're going to try again. Because then if there is some cultists, I can go in and do a stun. And I think we're going to do balanced measure. Or do I want to do something earlier? Unstoppable Charge and Whirlwind isn't the end of the world. There's quite a small room. Do I want to go early or late? Does it matter? going to matter if there's a lot of cultists in here that are going to summon things. So let's do it that way. If 
Basically what I need is the brute to go first, I think. So brute force is probably okay. Then you can come in and hide. You, I need you to go... That's almost perfect. And then I just need like a movement card of some description. Movement three. Yep, that seems good. Disorienting flash. I quite like. But I need to go a little bit faster to use that. What about proximity mine? So that I go just after the brute. Then I can stun some of the cultists. But the brute's got his stun on. So let's just go late and see if we can use an ink bomb. And then... Net shooter. Let's not get that one. Proximity mine. That lets me position correctly for ink bomb. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, brute. Through you go, dude. Open the door. What does it look like? Okay, the place I want to go has a trap on it. That is really annoying. This would be a, a lovely place to go in and put a stun in. What are the cultists doing, first of all? Cultists are moving and healing, so it's not too bad. The Bone Ranger Elite is attacking, moving to attacking four, so. What are the cultists doing? They're moving and healing, so I don't need to worry about them. So he's attacking for four, and he's attacking for four and targeting two. So if the brute stays there, he's going to take 12 points of damage. And they are all going before anyone else on my team. So these guys can move too. So if they're... Are they going to move two? Yeah. So they can see the Tinkerer if they get to there. So that guy can't see the Tinkerer. Seemingly that guy can see the Tinkerer. So what if I put the Brute here? Because you can't get any closer to any of these guys at the back. Am I better off getting him over here so that he can deal some damage next turn? He would take... He would take a bunch, but he'd survive. The cult, yeah, the cultists aren't attacking. If I get him here, he can use his take out normal enemy card next turn and disarm one of the cultists, maybe. Maybe that's the play. Let's do that. We'll muddle. They have nicely positioned themselves with the ink bomb. Okay, 
so we're still alive. So there's no one we can push into the trap yet. So I think we're going to ink bomb in here. We're going to get the scoundrel in here. So I think if we can get the hatchet here, that seems sensible. Or I could move him further and pick up some gold. Does that help us in any way? I don't know why he can't get there. Three. Okay, never mind. Let's go to the door. That's okay. This is a six damage trap. So the Brute should have a card next turn that lets him attack and push. Whirlwind. Okay, Whirlwind on the Brute is the card for next turn, definitely. And then Provoking Roar. So we'll skip the push. Stick the favorite on him for nine damage. End the hatchet's turn. Scoundrel. Now where do I want to position you? You can't make it quite as far as I need you to. Like, I really would want to get you up to there. So should we go here? Then work on the skeleton archer next turn? Let's do that. And then we'll do invisible. Now, if I pull back gruesome advantage with my stamina potion, it's not going to be much use to me because I'm not going to get the full advantage because they're still surrounding themselves. So if I move him to here, I get a good ink bomb in here. I like that. Skip. Three of them together. I'm going to use the piercing. I'm going to hope we get as good a rolls as we possibly can. Okay, we will. End turn. So I think a whirlwind is an obvious choice here. There's three enemies around. And I want to do that attack quickly. Now it's only going to do four damage, but it's 12 damage total. Tinkerer. Your disintegration beam would be pretty good at this point. I may be able to take out two of three tar two, two targets. Do you have a bottom heel anywhere? So what would I use on the bottom card for you? Think about what you're going to do.
Attack three, range four. Target two. How much as well? We can do four damage. So I'm probably going to need two damage left over there. So repeat shot is an obvious one. Just can't get. I can't get anywhere to use that trap at the moment. There is another trap up there. But again, there's no real way to to use it. The only person that can use the trap at the moment is the brute. So I'll start with repeat shot. So worst case he just attacks the repeat shot that way. And I want a move card of some description, because I want to be able to pick up my favourite from the dead guy. So you're gonna do disintegration beam. Stamina booster, and we'll get the hatchet's high damage card back. I think that's a good plan. Move to poison. To get up to there. Then with the cloak that gets you, that probably means this guy dies. Just there's no, I can't quite get enough damage on this guy. Really, does the hatchet have a two target? It does. But he's gonna come, I need him to go before the tinkerer does. So if you double throw, then repeat shot. That guarantees this guy is below the Tinkerer's disintegration beam range. Let's you pick up the favorite. Then at least one cultist left that we haven't dealt with yet. This is a, it's a potential for hook gun next turn. That's a six damage trap. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so there's no summoning going on. The cultists are attacking fairly heavily. The archers aren't attacking too heavily this turn. So that's something on our side. So I wanted to move to, to poison. Should I do the cultist or the archer? What's the cultist? I'm taking away a bit of the usefulness of my whirlwind by killing this guy ahead of time. When I could also take him out next turn. If I do this and the stun powder, we probably net net take away more damage. Yeah, I think we do. We're gonna do it that way. We outright killed him. Not too bad, not too sad about that one. We will... I'm gonna try and get back Visage of the Invisible. Because I could then outright kill the cultist over there next turn. Okay, end turn. Without too much effort, so I need to move two card. So let's do a Whirlwind. Yep. We're gonna take some damage off of our teammates. And we're gonna use our healing potions. So is he poisoned? He's not. Tinker up, you've got these two dead. It's quite a lot of damage coming in. Okay. So 
that is interesting. Is there any way I can get that guy below five? That's a quick thing. So if I can, I can fully disintegration beam over here, and that's going to be incredible. Let's do... I think this is worth a burn card to attack here. Good. For a triple integration, uh, triple disintegration. Beam. Now we're going to attack here and here. He dies. Oh yes, this is a brilliant turn. Lost count of how many we're going to have killed. One, two, three, four, five, six. We might have wiped the room. Come on, Tinkerer. This is your moment. Those three. Wow, that was quite a cool animation. I definitely didn't expect this turn to go this well. But I am not going to complain, and we're going to pull back Fearsome Efficiency. We'll end our Tinkerer's turn. Come on, Brute, don't die. Okay, we've got Burner card. Uh, not going to use Fatal Advance. Going to do that and that. So, move a lot, bash a lot. Do you have stun? Do you have any stun? Can't kill an adjacent normal enemy. So move two and poison seems an obvious choice. And then open wound seems another good choice. I can only open the wound if it's adjacent to one of my allies, which is probably not going to happen. You, how do I get fearsome efficiency? So I need to go move two, fearsome efficiency. And the Abyssum Efficiency has a range of four. Perfect, Tinkerer. You got your Loot 2 card. This is a... Nice Loot 2 square, I think. Yes, that's going to be a fantastic Loot 2 square. So with that, for that matter, like anywhere here will be fine. Whatever you. Okay, so how much damage am I going to be dealing now? Two poison, that's five. You're going to deal six. You're going to deal some extra. Okay. I'm pretty sure that means everything dies. So let's go with it. Okay, he's healing one. That's fine. So you move two. I want to let the Tinkle pick up as much gold as possible, I think, because it's going to be funny. Ideally, I'd have gone there for some extra gold, but I can't get it. Anyway. He's already poisoned, so it doesn't matter. I may as well use the gold books to try and get the good roll. Six damage. Thank you very much. Turn. Iron heal for one, whatever. Burn a card. Yep, yep, yep. So, just get out. Tinker, what do you have? You've got a move. Damn it, it's the move and the loot problem again. One, two, one, two, one, two. I screwed that up. If 
Why don't you go over here, grab some loot. What's the ability? Ah, there isn't anyone to damage. That should give you your 13 experience, please. Hmm. You should have got to experience for that card. Okay, we'll figure it out in a bit. We'll loot two because there's no reason not to. 16 gold. Take that, thank you very much. I wonder if I still get two experience for just using this card. Don't know. So brute, you can loot one. So if you move two, then loot one. We've still got all the gold that we could have done. Okay. So we got there a bit unorthodox, but we got the gold. Sweet. And that's probably a fairly lucrative run. And we did it. Victory. The cultists are driven away from the manor, which is now safe again. You are unsure whether this is a good thing or not. So we were a pincushion. We weren't the first to kill. We never died. And we did get that experience. Got some more awards. Hatchet dealt 61 damage. Brute took 24 damage. Poor dude. Wow, the Brute dealt quite a lot of damage. 52. More than the Scoundrel. It's quite uncommon. I guess the whirlwind helped us a bit there. 13 experience, 13 experience. Seven items used on the brute. Okay. Turning to map. Okay, I'm just gonna pause the, we'll finish the correct quest. Pendant of Dark Pact, seven XP and the Shadowfield map. I received a package by courier this morning and it had a pretty piece of jewelry in it. However, every time I look at it, it turns my stomach probably means you'll find a use for it. You know what he thinks of us. Okay, I'm just gonna stop the YouTube recording here and then we'll come back 